Okay, so I see folks are still still joining here, but I wanted to say a good afternoon, everyone who is with us. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our educational webinar, Nitrates in Groundwater, the Basics. So we have a tight agenda this afternoon with only half an hour. So we're going to go ahead and start promptly so that we can cover the topics that you've come to hear. And uh, before we continue, I'd like to make sure our translation is covered for those who need it. So I'm going to go ahead and welcome Jose Soto, who's our interpreter for this afternoon, to provide instructions in Spanish on how to access the Spanish audio channel. So Jose, go ahead. Jose, you might have to um, exit the translation room. We can't hear you over here. <laughs> okay. Jose, I think you're back in and I've ended the translation. Do you mind providing instructions in Spanish for folks who may need translation? Sure, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear okay. you. Ah, bien. Bueno, para servir uh, servicios de uh, interpretación y traducción en español, por favor, seleccione el, el icono en la parte de abajo de su pantalla, que es en forma de, de un globo, um, y luego seleccione Spanish para tener uh, referencia a audio en español. Okay, great. Thank you, Jose. And a few other Zoom details before we get into our content. I wanted to let you all know that your video and microphones are turned off. And so if you're an attendee, we cannot see or hear you in the audience. Um, if you have questions, please use the Q&A feature in your Zoom menu to type out a question. So we'll answer those throughout the presentation if and whenever possible. And any questions remaining, we'll answer live at the end of the presentations. And if you'd like to ask your question verbally, we'll take those at the end of all the presentations. So you can use the raise hand feature to let us know you have a question and we'll unmute you and go ahead and listen and answer at that time. For any technical difficulties, we ask that rather than using the Q&A box, you use the chat feature and we'll address any issues you have there. And one final note that's not on the slide, but wanted you all to know that this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on our YouTube channel. So if you do miss something, you can always access the content at a later time. And we'll make sure that that uh, video is emailed out to our attendees. So you'll have an email notice of that when it's ready. So tonight's uh, webinar is hosted by the King's Water Alliance, an organization bringing drinking water solutions for those impacted by nitrates in drinking water. And before we continue to the content outlined on this agenda, I'd just like to introduce myself and the team who's on this afternoon. My name is Rebecca Quist and I work in external affairs at King's River Conservation District. And I help with public outreach on the King's Water Alliance. And I'm joined here by my external affairs teammate, Ashley Goldsmith, who's helping with webinar logistics and streaming with Jose Soto, who's also with Kings River Conservation District, who's serving as our interpreter for the event. And panelists, Charlotte Gallick and Vicki gretzinger Graber, who I will have introduced themselves. So Charlotte. Hi, good afternoon. I am Charlotte Gallick and I am the Executive Director of the King's Water Alliance. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vicki kretzinger Graber. I'm the President of Ludorf and Scalmanini Consulting Engineers. Great. Thank you to our panelists for being here. And I will go ahead and give the floor back to Charlotte, who's going to give us the background on who the King's Water Alliance is. Great, thanks Rebecca. So the King's Water Alliance, who are they? Um, as a result of a new state regulation for nitrates, management zones were developed in areas identified by the state as having high nitrates. 
I represent the King's Water Alliance Management Zone. And uh, next slide, please, Ashley. So the King's uh, Water Alliance, you can see here on this map that has the bold blue border. Um, and we're surrounded by uh, several other management zones where uh, high nitrates have been identified. Um, we are a nonprofit that is funded by a uh, coalition of nitrate dischargers uh, who have organized uh, this nonprofit organization to specifically comply with this new regulation called the Salt and Nitrate Control Program. Um, we are currently implementing programs to provide safe drinking water for all of these nitrate impacted areas and, and, and residents within our boundary. Next slide, please. So uh, I mentioned the state regulations and specifically this regulation was approved by the State Water Resources Control Board. And the State Water Resources Control Board exists to preserve and enhance and restore the quality of California's water resources and drinking water for the protection of the environment, public health, and all beneficial uses. So um, in 2019, the State Water Resources Control Board adopted this regulatory framework for the nitrate control program. And it has three specific goals to provide short and long-term safe drinking water supplies to residents impacted by unsafe levels of nitrates. And unsafe levels of nitrates would be a um, above 10 milligrams per liter nitrate concentration. Uh, and this water quality analysis needs to be provided by a, a a certified lab that will take a water quality sample and then analyze it for nitrates. Um, also, as a part of our goals, we want to reduce nitrate impacts to water supplies and restore groundwater quality where it's reasonable and feasible. And with that, I will turn it over to Vicki. Thank you, Charlotte. So in this section of the webinar this afternoon, I'm going to be highlighting important aspects about nitrate. These include what is this chemical? Why is it in groundwater? When does it become unsafe? How does it get into well water? Where do nitrate problems occur in California? Why do we care about this chemical nitrate? And where is the drinking water affected in this local area, in particular the King's Subbasin? And what is the King's Water Alliance doing to address the problem? Next slide, please. So what is nitrate? This is a very common chemical found in most fertilizers, manure from all kinds of animals and human waste. It's a contaminant that can make drinking water unsafe for drinking when it's above a certain level. And nitrate's not a chemical that you can see, smell, or taste in the water, and it can't be just boiled away. Next slide, please. So human activities involve the use of food and other products that were produced or are composed of a whole host of chemicals, including nitrate. And this slide illustrates just some of the many things that we do that are beneficial to produce and consume food. We create products that we use in our everyday lives, or we manage the waste that comes from humans and animals. And these activities, they're all essential to our livelihoods and well-being, but they bring with them waste products that if those aren't carefully managed, they can pollute the land and the surface water and groundwater. Next slide, please. So when is this chemical nitrate unsafe? There is a legal regulatory limit for how much nitrate can be present in a public water system. This is the California state regulatory limit for the nitrate as nitrogen. It's a drinking water standard of 10 milligrams per liter. Next slide, please. Sometimes groundwater to be used for beneficial purposes comes from tens of feet below the land surface and sometimes it's produced from hundreds of feet below the land surface. A well is installed and equipped with a pump in order to bring the groundwater from these sediments deep under the land surface for drinking water and other uses. On this slide, we have a simple picture of a well structure and I'm gonna highlight a couple of key features of the structure. 
There's an outer pipe or casing which has a slotted section. This is called a well screen. And this is where the water enters at certain depths of the well. There's also a, a gravel pack or sometimes called a filter pack. And this is placed along the exterior of the well casing. And it acts to create a filter that holds back fine sediments in the subsurface when groundwater then enters the screened area and is pumped to the land surface. Most importantly, however, a properly constructed well is a grout seal, and this is placed from the land surface to the top of the gravel pack. A properly placed well seal helps reduce contaminants from being introduced at the land surface, entering the well, and this might include such things as drainage water that moves towards the well, and then it affects the quality of groundwater pumped from the well. Next slide, please. Not uncommonly, a lot of older wells may have been constructed with an outer casing. This is called a conductor casing and sealing material that may partially seal the well to contaminants at the land surface. However, as shown in this slide and with our arrow and the runoff and pollutants, it shows how these can potentially um, move down through gravel envelopes that extend to the land surface, but these create an ineffective barrier and a highly permeable vertical pathway for contaminants to move into the well structure and affect water quality. Next slide, please. So here, this slide illustrates how shallow groundwater with high nitrate levels can enter the well below a properly sealed well. Here, the nitrate and shallow groundwater moves into the gravel envelope and downward to the portion of the well screen to withdraw water from a deeper part of the groundwater system. So even though the deeper groundwater may be safe, that the nitrate levels may be low, the shallow contaminated groundwater may affect the quality of the groundwater that's ultimately pumped to the land surface. Next slide, please. As part of an, a many statewide studies, nitrate data have been collected. These are nitrate data from wells uh, throughout the Central Valley as shown on this slide. They're collected and mapped to understand the distribution in groundwater throughout the Central Valley. This map shows the distribution of nitrate in the upper part of the groundwater system in the Central Valley. And the colors on the map show the levels of nitrate in groundwater ranging from below the nitrate standard, the lowest levels are shown in green colors here, and increasing nitrate levels are shown in the warmer colors, yellow and orange. And then those that are shown in red colors are locations where wells with nitrate test data exceed the nitrate drinking water standard and the water may be unsafe to drink. Many small communities in the Central Valley rely on groundwater for drinking water and groundwater quality has been widely impacted and made unsafe by many decades of historical land uses and associated groundwater conditions. Next slide. There are Oops, could we back up one, Ashley? Thank you. There are many different kinds of wells. These include public or municipal type wells serving many persons connected to one well or a well system. Also private domestic wells, ag wells, monitoring wells, industrial wells, and many other types of wells. But here we highlight a, an important point. So the state requires regular testing of public supply wells to ensure that groundwater produced from these wells meets state drinking water standards. Public supply wells can have treatment to make sure the water is safe for drinking before it reaches homes. Private domestic wells are typically tested for bacteria and nitrate when they are initially constructed. However, following construction, there is no state requirement for testing a private well. It is up to the owner to determine if they want to know whether the quality of water from that well is changing and whether it remains safe to drink. Private domestic wells can have treatment and this includes such devices as at the point of use inside the household. Next slide, please. An important part of the new nitrate control program that Charlotte mentioned and is being implemented here by the King's Water Alliance is identifying where groundwater has been affected by high nitrate levels and to provide solutions to achieve safe drinking water. To do this, the King's Water Alliance Management Zone has already compiled existing data 
from many public agencies, including national, state, and local agencies that provide this information to the public on their websites. Altogether, nitrate data from uh, groundwater wells were compiled for more than 7,500 wells. Many maps were prepared to identify areas where nitrate levels in groundwater potentially make the water unsafe to drink. This is a map, one of the maps created, and this shows the dots that represent wells on the map where nitrate data have been collected. And again, as I mentioned in an earlier slide, the color represents the nitrate concentration measured at that location. And the coloration shows whether it's lower, the greenish colors, or there's more nitrate at that location in the yellow and orange, or if it's exceeding the drinking water standard of 10 milligrams per liter, it's red color and that's unsafe to drink. These maps were also used to estimate the locations and the number of potentially affected individual domestic wells uh, that might be affected by high nitrate. And they were also used to identify where water systems, uh, existing systems where they treat for nitrate or where treatment may be needed. Next slide, please. So the King's groundwater subbasin shown here on this slide is one of the six subbasins in the Central Valley that are initially required to comply with the new Central Valley Nitrate Control Program. These are referred to as priority one basins and other areas will be required to comply next. The King Subbasin shown here includes towns and cities such as city of Fresno, there's Arosi, Dinuba, Kerman, Clovis, Reedley, Sanger, and, and many others. The Tulare Lake Subbasin, which is the southern part of the King's Water Alliance Management Zone, is one of the basins um, in the group of Priority Two basins. At this time, the focus is on the northerly part of the King's Water Alliance Management Zone Priority One area. The King's Water Alliance is actively implementing steps to address nitrate in groundwater including uh, offering free well testing to confirm the locations of wells potentially affected by high nitrate. And if nitrate levels are high and unsafe, then the King's Water Alliance is providing clean, safe water for drinking purposes. And in the next slides, Rebecca is going to talk about this. Great, thank you so much, Vicki. Um, and now that everyone has a background on nitrates in groundwater, who the King's Water Alliance is and the area that it serves, I'd like to offer next steps for residents when it comes to accessing safe drinking water. So recalling Vicki's presentation, the area on this map shows nitrate levels around the priority one area of the King's Water Alliance. This priority area is the initial focus of safe drinking water solutions in the King's Water Alliance. If you are a resident that relies on a domestic well for drinking water and are located in the priority one area with nitrates greater than 10 milligrams per liter, you may be eligible to receive free solutions from the King's Water Alliance. And uh, those solutions include free bottled water delivery, uh, to the home of nitrate impacted residents. So the King's Water Alliance um, has contracted with Sparklets to provide weekly drinking water delivery to eligible residents. And immediate free and safe drinking water is also available at three fill stations that are located throughout the King's Water Alliance. So the King's Water Alliance has launched, like I said, a bottled water program along with a well testing program for, what, for eligible residents who receive drinking water from a domestic well. So if you know that you likely have a nitrate issue or even if you're unsure and you want to find out, now is the time to take advantage of this program. So first you would just need to verify that you are a resident in the King's Water Alliance Priority One area by using our interactive map at kingswaterlines.org slash map. The link is there on the slide. So you can type your address in on that map and it will let you know where your home lands within the King's Water Alliance area. To receive bottled water, we would need confirmation that your well has unsafe levels of nitrates. And we are offering free well testing to eligible residents in the priority one area. So to take advantage of that, 
Um, you fill out a well test and bottled water form that we have developed available on our website. That's at kingswateralliance.org slash well test. The form is available in both English and Spanish. And once you fill out that form, we will have all the necessary details to follow up with you to schedule a well test or to initiate bottled water delivery in the case that you already have a well test available. Uh, we also have a paper form available if you need one. You can contact us by phone or by email to request that paper form. You can see our contact information there on that slide and we'll have the contact information on our final slide as well. And once you check off those two steps, the rest is up to us to follow through and to work with you on the next steps of having your well tested and receiving bottled water. And one thing that we would like to note is that some may have a parcel with a domestic well that has a regulatory requirement to test for nitrates. For example, an irrigated lands regulatory program enrolled parcel with the Kings River Water Quality Coalition. So these parcels are not eligible for the free well testing since they have that regulatory requirement to test the domestic well, but they are still eligible for free bottled water in the case of unsafe levels of nitrates. So those individuals in this case would just need to provide us with the well test results showing greater than 10 milligrams per liter of nitrogen. And so you would still go online and fill out that form there's a place for you to upload your well test and you would do it at that time. And it's also a good opportunity to mention that those who already had a well test conducted within the last five years, even outside of a requirement, you can send those to us rather than go through the process of us testing the well. So you would fill out that same form and like I said, upload your existing well test and that just saves everyone time and you'll get your bottled water sooner. And I wanted to highlight uh, the fill stations that I mentioned as the other safe drinking water solution. Um, there are fill stations that are accessible now. A water fill station is a machine or a kiosk that provides drinking water at no cost to the user. And the water is provided from a municipal supply that is safe according to federal and state regulations, including the Safe Drinking Water Act. So those machines are available 24-7 and you can find more information, including maps, links to Google Maps on our website at the link listed there. And we recognize that we may not have covered everything in this webinar, um, especially when it comes to maybe nitrates and health effects. And we'd like to point you to some trusted resources to further explore these topics. So we've created an area on our website where we host nitrate and health effects fact sheets, um, frequently asked questions, links to resource web pages and information guides. And so we encourage you to visit our website and access those resources if you'd like additional information or more detailed information. So you can find that at kingswateralliance.org slash safe drinking water. And finally, uh, we ask that all of you here who have attended the webinar stay engaged with us. We thank you for being engaged today and ask that you continue to stay engaged. And the best way to hear about upcoming events and program updates is to join our email list. So you can sign up on our website or if it's easier for you, you can drop your name and your email in the chat and I will make sure that we record that and get you signed up for the list. And if you'd like more information about the well test and drinking water form that I've been talking about, please join us for one of our upcoming webinars. It's a how-to uh, filling out the well test form. So we'll be offering a live demo. We'll go over different scenarios. You can have your questions answered. Um, you can go ahead and register for those on our website on the events page. Um, you can also find details for those on the events page and the Zoom link is available now. So if you'd rather just go directly there, and join, you can do it that way. If you register, you'll have the Zoom link sent directly to you. And if you're on social media, we'd love to connect with you. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We're currently live streaming this webinar on our Facebook page. So if that's a way that you like to do events, um, we'll continue to do that in the future.
And that concludes our content for this afternoon. And we wanted to make sure we had enough time to open up the floor for any questions. We're here to answer those. You can use, again, the Q&A feature, or if you'd prefer, um, you can go ahead and use the raise hand feature and we'll unmute you and you can ask your question that way. So please, I'll open up the floor to any of our participants who might have questions. <clears throat> Okay, I see Jenny has her hand raised, so I'll go ahead and unmute you, Jenny. So whenever you're ready, Jenny, we are here and listening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, just a quick question. Is this water safe for my dogs and chickens and whatever? Would it translocate to the eggs? <laughs> and my kittens? I do not know the answer to that. Um, I would say check those resources that we listed um, in the previous slide, if you don't mind going back to there. Um, and this information is you know, fully vetted through the state and they may have some information on animals and what, what that translates to for you know, your, your, your produce and stuff that you provide um, on your your own farm. Um, so yeah, I would I would start there and and hopefully there may be even additional resources within these websites to to check into that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. well. Seems like I have something in the chat. Um, does this water get absorbed to fruits and vegetables and then to us via farming? So actually nitrate is a uh, fertilizer nutrient for plants. So it's essential to grow crops and that's, that's all utilized within the fruit. Um, and, and it's important for fruits and vegetables to grow uh, to get that fertilizer and, and the nitrates needed for it to grow. So it is important for growing fruits. Um, it doesn't translate to us through fruits, um, maybe a small amount, um, I'm not sure, um, but um, not at any level that is um, of concern for your health. Um, the fruit utilizes those nutrients to grow. All right, so we'll go ahead and give folks just another minute here if there's any last questions. We do want to end on time at 1230 just to be respectful of everyone's lunch hour. Um, but if there's any other questions after we end the webinar, please contact us via phone or email or through our website. We have a contact form. So we encourage you to keep asking questions even after today. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions. Charlotte and Vicki, 
and it's 1230. So I think we'll go ahead and bid everyone farewell. And thank you again for joining us this afternoon. And we will make this recording available for a future resource. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon.